All of these shots share one commonality. They all use virtual production. These giant video walls on both sides of the train. But steep costs, too many studios, and lack of standardization have the industry asking. Could virtual production be a tech bubble? It's real projection brought into the future. Huge TV screens wrapping around a stage. XR is kind of like this shiny new toy and everybody wants it. Normally, when we talk about tech bubbles, it's technology that kind of came out of nowhere, became a massive money pit and ultimately failed or dramatically cut down in size. Think about the non-successful ventures during the dot-com era. Computer.com. Or last year's massive layoffs in Silicon Valley. But for virtual production, it's a little bit weird. See, we've been doing virtual production for a long time, but VP has seen a steep rise in popularity ever since 2019 when The Mandalorian came out shot on their iconic LED volume. But virtual production is so much more than just LED walls. It's live motion tracking, motion capture, it's new animation techniques, live set extensions, and so much more. Recently, all of the news about virtual production has been about new studio builds, shocking closures, expensive day rates, and a steep barrier to entry on both a technical and a financial front. For reference, in 2019, there was like one studio doing LED virtual production, or at least one that everyone was talking about. Today, in 2023, there's well over 300 studios. And that number grows basically every month. So is virtual production a bubble, like other tech bubbles before it? That is a viable question that needs answering. When The Mandalorian first came out, it seemed like everyone who was involved in virtual production was preaching that it was the end of green screen, that it was gonna kill the way that we've done movies, and that production would never be the same again. And hey, we're guilty of that too. But that was long before we knew the logistics of running a show, series, or film on an LED wall. A lot of criticism online talks about how expensive the day rates of these places are. It can cost you $40,000, $50,000, $60,000 a day. How do you pay for that? Or because of this price tag, virtual production is catered only to high-end, big budget production. In terms of LED wall virtual production, that might be the case for now. But indie virtual production solutions are already being used by some of your favorite content creators right here on YouTube. So to say that all of virtual production is a bubble is an overstatement. But is virtual production on LED or in-camera VFX a bubble of its own? Listen, I could just say no and list X number of reasons why, but that's not really fair. I think virtual production has some big pros, but also some big downside. So let's lay out arguments for both and then come to a conclusion at the end. All right, negatives first. How many stages is there actually capacity for? This is a legitimate question, and unless the demand increases for the amount of stages we have, there will be more stage closures. Like on the House of the Dragon set, or even Dark Bay, built for 1899. Who knows what's gonna happen to that space? Then there are graphs like this. This graph measures the estimated market growth in virtual production in the Asian Pacific. More shows, more studios. Interesting. At the end of the day, it's not the amount of virtual production stages open, it's the stages that are purpose-built and thoughtfully engineered that are gonna make better workflows and therefore grow the market. Environmental concerns. LED walls draw a ton of power. And you also can't turn them off. Now they have a black mode where they're not emitting light, but they're still sitting there drawing power and generating heat. In contrast, recent articles have been saying that on average, the big budget movie produces the same as 342 homes in CO2 emissions. We've seen what it can do and the background just doesn't look real. Just doesn't look real. Again, this is a fair critique, especially when filmmakers are just taking assets from the UE marketplace, non-optimized, and trying to blend them seamlessly to the background. You're gonna get things that look like a video game. Don't get me wrong, there are products that are virtual production that look amazing. Like this, and this, and this. But also, we're just not that good at making environments yet. So why would we assume that if we throw it on an LED wall, it's gonna look amazing? Unreal improves and other engines improve, artists find ways to make the environments look more incredible. Which leads me to my last critique, lack of standardization. Now you've heard this before, virtual production is the wild west of filmmaking. There's no rules, there's no best way to do something, at least, yet. No, people are finding workflows as the tech develops, which may be exciting to some, but when there's a standard way of doing things, a lot of people are gonna be told that they were doing it the wrong way before. Okay, so that's my critiques. 
Let's get on to the positives. Versatility. We've gone over this on this channel before, the shining light of virtual production, customizable environment. If you can create the environment, you can shoot there. I'm not just trying to glaze over this lightly, but when you think of virtual production, that's what you think. So much of the virtual production process is done in pre-production and onboarding people to that workflow is gonna be a learning curve. Industry expansion, new jobs and new roles. This one speaks for itself, whether it's new roles that are needed on set, like a volume control or an environment artist, this is bringing new creatives to set. I will counterpoint myself here. Virtual production is going through a massive recruitment phase. You know, the more stages there are, the more people you need to run the stages, right? But if those stages shut down and we've seen some dramatic closures recently, job security, could become an issue. Virtual production is another creative tool. Now virtual production may not be the solution that was initially pitched to us, the thing that's gonna take down green screen forever, but it is a useful tool in the filmmaker's toolkit. Like these scenes shot for $18.99. Imagine the cost of doing a shot like this. They even said in behind the scenes that they initially weren't gonna shoot $18.99 on virtual, but there was too many difficult shots and virtual ended up being the best solution. So after weighing the critiques of virtual production as well as the positives of virtual production, what's the final outcome? Is virtual production a bubble? I think, and remember, this is my opinion here, it's going to be like the winners of the dot-com era. Think Apple, Amazon, Microsoft. There are some studios that are just getting so, so good at creating this kind of content that there are other studios that will not be able to compete. Just look at some of the amazing work from ILM, Lux Machina. These people have production that's just a step above everything else I've seen. Ultimately, I think any piece of viable tech, whether it be a plugin or whether it be hardware, will be bought out by these big companies and integrated and optimized into their system. I also think it's clear that as time goes by, the rental cost of these stages will drop. That could benefit some smaller studios that can have smaller productions, but it could also hurt the mega studios that need the blockbusters to make money. I don't think that virtual production is necessarily a bubble, I think it's a land grab. You have all these companies and developers trying to get their hands on as much real estate as possible. So that way when time goes by and we find out what works best for in-camera VFX workflows, those who have their hands on the most will win the hardest, but also they will lose the least.